Well, today finds me in the White Mountain National Forest in north central New Hampshire here. This is the uh, Mad River in the foreground here. This flows uh, southwest from the uh, Waterville Valley community towards the uh, Pemigewasset River. And just above this river is a mountain I'm wanting to climb today. This is called Welch Mountain. It's about 1,800 feet higher than where I'm standing. It's about 2,800 feet in elevation. And um, the summit is 2,800 feet. I think that the Welsh Mountain is a couple hundred feet lower than the summit. The actual summit is on Dickey Mountain. There's a loop trail up there. It's a little over four miles long. And um, I'm gonna call this on the trail of the Lonesome Jack Pine. Jack Pine is common in Canada. It's common in the upper Great Lakes. I found it on the dunes along Lake Michigan in the past. Almost did a double take, thought it was Virginia Pine, but I knew it couldn't be because of the location. And um, Jack Pine is only found in a few places in northern New England, at least in New Hampshire here. There's only a few locations where it grows. And uh, one of those locations is up here on Welch Mountain. So um, we're going to do a hike today. Gonna be up in the woods several hours looking for jack pine and whatever else we can find up there. There's several trees in this area I haven't put on this channel yet. I may start introducing those trees along this hike and we'll be adding them in more detail when the opportunity and the time allows. So we've got a perfect fall day here. This is early November, but the weather's gonna be more like October. Highs in the 50s up on the mountain there, around 60 in the valley here with bluebird skies. And we're doing the loop around Welch and Dickey Mountain here. I'm doing it in a clockwise direction which will lead us to the highest point of the hike first, which is uh, Dickey Mountain. And Welch Mountain is just a couple hundred feet lower. Um, supposedly the jack pine is on Welch Mountain to our east here and not on Dickey Mountain. We'll be looking for it. I haven't been around that tree a lot, but when I have, it definitely looked a lot like Virginia Pine from a distance. So I think it would stand out amongst these hemlocks, red spruce, and any other pines that might be growing up there, which could be white pine or red pine. We'll see what's up there. But this area was burned severely um, over 100 years ago. No real big trees up here. A lot of red oak and some red spruce starting to come back. Originally, this was red spruce on this mountain from what I've read. So the red spruce um, always seems to reclaim these mountains if there's no forest fires to stop that from happening. We're going to keep climbing. We're going to about to get to the open ledges of Dickey Mountain here, and we'll look at the views as we go. And we're definitely enjoying a bluebird morning here. About an hour into this climb up Dickey Mountain, and we're getting to the ledges where the views are. And views they are, and you know, this has a great view without having to climb above tree line, especially this time of year where it's much colder above tree line and plenty of red spruce balsam fir even a little white pine right here right there could be some red pine at this location i don't see any yet certainly a possibility i saw some um, in this general area when i was recording some waterfalls this week those are on my other channel called profile falls Exploring Profile Falls and exploring Georgiana and Harvard Falls. Those are both on the Let's Dig a Little Deeper channel. Well, I'm looking over here at the summit of Welch Mountain and I'm looking for trees that might have a crown that's similar to that of a Virginia pine or the appearance of Virginia pine. That's far enough away. I'm not sure if I see anything like that, but that's where we'll be looking. Meanwhile, we'll keep recording what's up here. 
it's a great place just to enjoy the view and um these are lonesome jack pines they're not too common in this state at all so um they're on their own on this mountain and a few others around here ones that have burned repeatedly where the cones of the jack pine can actually regenerate jack pine actually um needs heat for the cones to open or in some cases after logging the ground temperature will become high high enough for the cones to open up without a fire and our ledges continue as we ascend dickey mountain here you know i called this lesson on the trail of the lonesome jack pine because these populations here are isolated they're not continuous between here and where it is more common in Canada and the upper Great Lakes and upper Midwest. Actually, it grows westward all the way to the Northwest Territories, east of the Rocky Mountains. So it's a, got a very large east-west range. But we're on the trail of the lonesome jack pine, and this one is by it lonesome. It's by itself. I don't see any others on this ledge. I'll keep looking. But this one's by itself. It's got a red spruce on one side for a neighbor and a red spruce on the other side for a neighbor. And this one's just getting started. Might be 20, 30 years old. They don't grow too fast in this situation. You can see each year's growth, the whirl of branches. So this one is still scrubby and short. We'll be looking for larger examples of this jack pine as the day goes on here. The population I read about was on the mountain right next to this, which is Welch Mountain, but it's all basically the same mountain, so the plants could easily disperse themselves um, and be on both mountains. So that's what we're finding here. These needles, boy, these are pretty short for a pine tree. They're even shorter than those of Virginia pine. They come in twos and they're short and stout. And the cones are short, maybe an inch, inch and a half. The cones do not fall off these branches. They stick around. And the only way you can get a new jack pine tree is for the cone to fall to the ground with the branch. And I found a few examples of that on the ground here where the tree, the, the branch came down with the cone. Here's one here that's separate. So that's how it works. Um, possibly when the tree burns, while it's still alive, the cones would open up and fall to the ground during the fire. I'm guessing on this ledge here that the cones opened up for this tree because of the heat on this south facing ledge here would cause it to open up, which would be, you know, hot enough to cause the cone to open just like a fire would right next to it boy mother nature made this lesson easy today we've got red pine and its needles come in bundles of two as well the needles are quite a bit longer three to five inches long um, definitely has a different appearance much more open appearance than that of this jack pine which i often think looks like virginia pine Except the ranges of the two plants do not overlap at all. Um, as far as I can tell, they don't. I've never seen either one in the same location. We've got a little bit of white pine up here too. So three pines on one ledge here. Probably some pitch pine down in the valleys around here. I don't know if it would come up on this mountain. We're getting a little far north for pitch pine. But it's common in the valleys um, down along Interstate 93 here. So here's our white pine with a softer needle. They come in bundles of five. And we'll do a direct comparison of the cones and needles of the red pine and jack pine. I have a feeling the two are found together on this mountain at least. And I don't think they're easily confused, but the cones could be. They're about the same size. The cone on the right and the needles on the right are from a red pine. That needle cone's pretty, pretty round. It's not much longer than it is wide. Um, needles, three to five inches. A little more, a little less. There's our quarter for scale. 
This cone of this jack pine is almost the same size as the red pine. Um, but again, they're not going to fall to the ground without the branch. So we've got red pine cones all over the ground here. The standard red pines here, quite a few red pines growing right here. So there's all kinds of them on the ground. And we'll be looking for jack pine cones as the day goes on. But I wouldn't expect to find any on the ground unless it's on a branch that broke off. And those needles from that jack pine, when they're on this um, leather case here for my tablet, you can really see how short they are. They're barely an inch, inch and a half long. They can be shorter than that sometimes. Um, cone is maybe an inch, inch and a half wide. And similar in length so um, our virginia pine needles often have that appearance where the two um, needles are twisted but they're usually twisted a little bit more than these they're like it's like almost like a half turn in the twist so um that's the only tree i think this could be easily confused with but we've got the red pine growing here with the same number of needles per bundle so i wanted to do that comparison and with the um cones which do look alike so we're going to keep climbing. We're going to keep looking at views. And the mountain in the background there, Welch Mountain, is supposed to have the population of jack pine that I came looking for. So we'll be doing some more looking around over there. We'll try to look for more jack pine trees of different sizes and shapes and ages. And that lonesome jack pine on Dickey Mountain, on the side of Dickey, Dickey Mountain, um, was the only one I found. I did peruse the area quite well so we're at the summit now and we'll be looking for them on welch mountain on the return leg of this loop meanwhile let's soak up this view this isn't that long of a climb and most of this side of the mountain isn't that steep we're looking west this is mount musalak straight ahead there got an open summit that's above tree line doesn't really show up too well today but it is above tree line um, got an alpine summit it's almost 5,000 feet just to the right of the summit there's a glacial cirque not coming out too well in this video but it's uh, remains of um, a mountain glacier that was in that side of the mountain there are several on that mountain on the other side as well North towards Franconia Notch here. We've got Mount Lincoln, Mount Lafayette, um, Cannon Mountain, the Kinsman Range. And looking northeast, we're getting into some closer mountains here, including Mount Tecumseh, which is um, in this general area here. I don't have it identified yet. And the uh, rock cairns and yellow paint blazes. Lead us across the open summit here of Dickey Mountain. So we're going to get a different view than that last stop. That was looking northwest. This is looking more east northeast towards Mount Tecumseh. I can make it out clearly now. There's a radio tower, cell phone tower near the top. And just to the east of where that is, there's ski slopes, Waterville Valley. Alpine ski area and the town of Waterville Valley is nestled in the valley to our northeast here. I believe this is called the Sandwich Range to our south and southeast. I got a couple more hikes in mind this week in that area. We'll see what I do. Those will be on the other channel if I can get to them. And that other channel is called Let's Dig a Little Deeper. But let's um descend this mountain and get, get see if we can get some more of that jack pine in our sights. The sub-summit of this mountain, which has its own name, is Welch Mountain. It's right in the foreground there. And with any luck, we can find more than just one lonesome jack pine on this mountain range.
Well, that last video showed the saddle between Dickey Mountain to our northwest and Welch Mountain. And as advertised, there's, there's a lot of jack pine up here, not just a little. Probably about half the trees on this ledge are jack pine. So let's take a look what we got here. We got more, more examples to look at. This tree here is maybe eight or 10 feet high. The cones are about the size of the ones we saw a couple hours ago. They've completely opened up, but they haven't fallen to the ground. The cones that are on the ground are still attached to the branches. So that's what happens. Um, they don't detach from the branch, but the branch can detach from the tree. So that's how we can get more jack pines if there is a fire. A lot of these cones, and the ones in the textbook especially, were shown this way, are still glued together with resin. So they're about an inch and a half long and maybe a half inch to three quarters of an inch wide. And a lot of these cones on these trees have not opened up at all. This one has, and it must have opened recently. It's nice and brown. It hasn't weathered to that gray color. But a lot of these are gray and weathered, but haven't opened. The youngest cones, probably this year's crop, are a brown color. Quite handsome, actually. Here's some up here at the lead growing point of this tree. So, quite interesting. Um, we've done a good look at the needles already, but these needles are short enough. I'm telling you folks, these are short enough needles. They're not even an inch on some of these trees. It could be mistaken for a balsam fir. Um, probably wouldn't be if you know your trees, but if you didn't, you saw needles about this length on a mountain where balsam fir is common, it could be confused. Just take a look at the tree as a whole here. None of these are that big. Um, this is a pretty harsh environment. Trees can live a long time and not have a lot of height to show for it on a bare rock ledge like this. But the form resembles a Virginia pine. Um, the bark, I think, resembles Virginia pine. Here's one here, it's about 25 feet high. Right up into the sun here. So that one's got a little more height to show for its efforts. And often in similar situations in the central and southern Appalachians, the Virginia pines would be stunted, crooked, and twisted just like these are um, when they grow on a ledge. So um, glad I made the hike up here. I'm glad I found that one on the other mountain because I don't see any red pine or white pine to compare it with on this ledge here. We'll keep our eyes open. We'll take a look at the view from the top and start descending back down. But what a great place to be on the trail of the Lonesome Jack Pines. And I got a few more hikes planned this week. Got good weather to do it. Hoping I could probably find some more. There's a couple other mountains in this general area that do have stands of Jack Pine. But um, more common to our north, common across the Canadian Shield, which is an area with thin soil and rock ledges like this. And grows all the way out. If you look at the range maps all the way out into Alberta, Northwest Territories, mostly on the lee side or the east side of the Rockies. So what a great place to do this um, study. And we'll add a few more clips as we go across the summit here of Welch Mountain. I'm gonna add one more tree here that has plenty of bark for us to study. And also a great view of Dickey Mountain where we um, first found Jack Pine a couple hours ago. Those ledges over there. Got the sun hitting this tree, but the bark is definitely a medium gray color. Where it flakes off, you get a little bit of reddish brown. That's true with a lot of pines. Um, so, definitely shaggier than the red pine that was on the other mountain. And much different than a white pine. And um, I'd say different than a pitch pine as well. Those are all trees that could share the same mountain with it in this area. 
but it definitely resembles that of the Virginia pine, but the, the ranges do not overlap. They don't even come close. So um, no confusing those. And um, we're gonna keep hiking here. Take one more look at the view and then put the wraps on this lesson. Well, we'll put the wraps on this lesson and uh, boy, some real twisted, almost bonsai-like jack pines up here. This guy here is growing every direction except up. It's amazing. That means it's been here a while and it's been twisted and bent and knocked down and got back up and won another round in the ring with Mother Nature. So it takes a tough tree to live on a mountain in New Hampshire. It takes a tough tree to grow on thin soil, but the jack pine is up for the challenge and hopefully this stand of jack pines can persist up here. The, what I read is that it's actually declining. So some of these trees are maybe dying off and there's really not too many young ones coming up in their place right now. So a uh, great place to learn the tree, great place to enjoy a beautiful fall day. And uh, we'll keep adding videos to this channel as the winter and early spring progress.